section number 36 of stories and pictures this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by linda ray nielsen bellevue washington stories and pictures by i l peretz translated by helena frank section thirty six travel pictures the fire the fiery tongue was put out at me by reb chame whitesensang's house the tongue grew larger and the house smaller till it fell in into a sea of wails and screams of terror there was fortunately no wind at the time of the conflagration when the sun rose from out of the mist blushing red like a beautiful and innocent maiden after the bath she saw nothing but long black male heads turning over the ruins with sticks they were looking for the remnants of wetenzang's riches in the remnants of his house groups of yellow-faced women are already standing around it the brown shawls are held with washed fingers over their unwashed heads and pale lips lament and bewail the house with the morning came a fresh wind a little sooner and it would have played havoc now it just shakes the remaining old chimney over the women's heads as though it were a palm the chimney rocks and groans sadly as though it felt deserted and perhaps it listens to the innkeeper telling me the tale of the destruction of the house and affirms with a nod true true you would sooner pick up every thread every dust grain of life out of which the sleep angel has woven you a fantastic dream than discover all the devices a jew must resort to before he hears the clink of copper coin if i were to describe everything you would think i had been dreaming myself who shall read the divine countenance when a wretched creature stands before him lifts its head with its racked brain extinguished eyes and trembling voice and pressing its empty stomach with cracked and bony hands prays without a voice without a language the tongue will not move but the blood cries lord of the world i have done my part now thou must help lord of the world feed me like the ravens in what am i more worthless than they are lord of the world where are my crumbs when will it be my sabbath of song and for all the body he has he might very well be a bird nothing is wanting but the wings and the nest with the crumbs and therefore the jewish parnassas are so specialized that their like will only be in the twenty-first century when one specialist will lift the upper eyelid a second press down the lower and a third examine the sick eye if a dish of roast veal a rag in a paper factory or an exported egg had a mouth to speak with and the rabbi reb heschel's memory they would still be unable to say how many jewish hands had taken them out and put them in from the peasant's shed into the roasting pan from the manure box into the hollander from the servitude into freedom and a jewish parnas is just such a ladder as jacob our father saw in a dream the night when all stones united into one stone for his head a ladder standing on the earth and the top of it reaches into the sky how deep it is chained into the earth 
is known only to the worm at its foot and how high it reaches to the star only that shines above it we grow giddy gazing up the height and when we peer down into the depths our stomach turns and we look green forever after angels ascend and descend the ladder men alas climb it with their last remaining strength and fall down it when their strength is exhausted and even if he can thank his stars his neck is not broken the jew has no strength left to begin climbing again such is the ladder that was partially climbed by our burnt-out one first he travelled between the villages as a runner on business for other people the earth was hot to his bare feet it was not the cry of a brother's blood this cane heard it was the cry of wife and children for bread heaven came to his assistance he bought very cheaply for two or three years on end and then he was promoted from a runner to a walker there was already provision at home for a week at a time and he only came back fridays with the result of a week's bargaining the brain was more composed and had time to take in the fact that the feet were becoming swollen that the father of six children ought always to walk and not run if he wishes his feet to carry him till at least one of them is confirmed and god help further he is now blessed by the name a village peddler that is he walks only when there is no opportunity to ride in from one village to another for a kopeck if the opportunity is there he rides god help him on again another year or two and he has his own horse and cart time does not stand still and he took no rest and god help the one horse turned into two the cart into a trap and it even came to a driver and he is now a produce dealer first he deals with peasants and then with gentlemen and god helping he gets into favor first with the head of the dairy farm then with the manager after that with the bailiff after that again with the steward and at last with the count himself oh by that time he is an inhabitant settled in the place the driver becomes a domestic servant horse and carriage are sold and pockets are lined with the count's receipts what is he now he is like the sun round which circles the stars small traders and little stars brokers he shines and illuminates the whole place with credit yelkinson compared him to a spider sitting in his web and the count to one of the flies entangling in it after a while our sun spider or spider son enlarged his house wrote marriage contracts for his children settled dowries on them bought his wife pearls and himself a sealskin coat engaged better teachers for his boys and for the girls someone to teach them if only how to write a jewish letter suddenly at least for the town the count was declared bankrupt and our spider son or son spider lost everything at once if i had passed through a month earlier i should have put down a house fifteen hundred roubles a propination a business in timber and produce a money lender he has lent the count fifteen thousand roubles at ten per cent not as a mortgage but for hand receipts now i write one word burnt out i might add a man of eighty-two swollen feet 
a household of seventeen persons. End of section thirty six. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Bellevue, Washington.